what is image decomposition? I'd like to start by talking about a simple analogy. This is some data that I have borrowed from uh, the National Instruments uh, website. And it shows the calibration of one of their instruments marked in um, uh, blue using an Instrom machine and also a strain gauge, the data points in uh, red. And first of all, they've joined the dots up uh, with the, uh, the red and the blue lines, but they've also fitted a regression line, uh, least squares regression line, to each set of data in the format y equals mx. And this is a form of decomposition. Because once I've fitted this regression line to the data set, then I only need to know that the value of m is for the strain gauge 82.86 to be able to reconstruct my data using solely that number and knowledge of the fact that the line has a format y equals mx. So this is a form of simple decomposition. We no longer have to carry around all the strain gauge data. We just need to know m equals 82.86. And at any point in the future, we can reconstruct the form of the calibration. So now let's move to something a little bit more uh, complicated. Here's a, a, a picture uh, that one of my kids took of me on holiday. This is an image of a three-dimensional shape, i.e. my face. I can turn that into uh, a grayscale uh, image, in which case the intensity of the image is represented as a number, uh, which is part of a matrix. And um, we could designate our matrix as capital I brackets little i j, and we've got an intensity value at each element in that matrix. Decomposition allows us to fit a set of known polynomials to the values in that matrix and end up with a small number of coefficients. And we can group those coefficients in a vector and call that a feature vector. And we could describe those coefficients inside the vector as shape descriptors. And so this vector is equivalent to the m in y equals mx. Because if I know the form of the polynomials I use to do the decomposition, I only need this feature vector to be able to reconstruct the original matrix and get back to the grayscale picture of me. So this is the concept of Im image decomposition that allows us to decompose the image into a feature vector and just maintain or store the feature vector uh, and be able to reconstruct at any point in the future the original image. Why use image decomposition? Let's talk a little bit first of all about what image decomposition is. It's a method of using feature vectors to provide a characterization of stress, strain, or displacement uh, maps. So we treat our uh, maps of stress or strain or displacement as an image, and we can decompose them using a set of known polynomials into a set of uh, coefficients from those polynomials that form the feature vector. The advantage of them is that uh, if we choose an appropriate set of uh, normalized orthogonal polynomials, then the result is invariant uh, to translation, to rotation, and to scaling. And that allows us to overcome issues associated with comparing uh, different data sets that are viewed from a different orientation, may have a different coordinate system, are of a different scale, and may also have a different pitch of data um, in each set. The fact that we've reduced the dimensionality of the data into a f uh, from a, a large matrix into a feature vector also gives us a uh, huge potential for quantitative comparison of data-rich fields of stress, strain, and displacement. And that's useful when we want to compare uh, data from simulations with those from experiments, or maybe we want to compare uh, strain fields from virgin specimens against those from damaged uh, specimens. So reasons to use image decomposition in, in stress analysis are 
It resolves issues associated with comparing data from different orientations, different coordinate systems, at different scales, and with different pictures of data. It also achieves a massive reduction in data dimensionality whilst utilising all the useful data present in our strain fields. And that gives us opportunities for making quantitative comparisons that we could hardly have dreamed of before. How to perform strain field decomposition. So I'm showing you here a set of uh, Chebyshev uh, kernels. Uh, these derive from uh, Chebyshev polynomials that we can use for strain field decomposition by representing our strain field as an image. So at the top of the pyramid here, the first kernel uh, defines the magnitude of our uh, strain field. It's essentially a flat plane that can slide up and down on the z-axis. In the second row, we can define uh, the gradient of our field, and we have a pair of planes that are inclined uh, perpendicular uh, to one another. As we move down the pyramid, uh, the number of kernels increases, and they describe uh, increasing orders of derivatives in uh, the, pl the field. So we can build up, if you like, our um, strain field distribution uh, using a combination of these uh, kernels. Let me start with an example. Here's a simple uh, tensile plate uh, with a hole in the middle of it. Uh, we've sprayed a black speckle pattern onto it so that we can uh, measure the strain field around the hole using digital image correlation. And so I'm showing you here in the top right-hand corner of the slide uh, the strain field, the direct uh, strain, for uh, a small uh, area just to the left of the hole. And so you can see the peak of the distribution on the edge of the hole, plotting microstrain up the, uh, the z-axis. If we take this uh, strain field and represent it as a grayscale image, we can then decompose it using Chebyshev uh, polynomials. And so here are the uh, Chebyshev coefficients for those polynomials. Their magnitude is plotted up the y-axis. And uh, in this case, we've used uh, 45 terms in our polynomials. So we've got 45 coefficients uh, plotted along uh, the x-axis. Uh, so these coefficients would form our feature vector and provide a description of our strain map. Before we use them in any uh, quantitative comparison, we should check that they're a good representation of our original strain map. And so we can reconstruct the strain map from these uh, Chebyshev coefficients. And so you can see my reconstruction in the bottom left-hand corner. And it's a pretty good representation of my original uh, strain map. There's a number of options available for decomposition. I just used uh, Chebyshev uh, polynomials, and these work well over a uniform uh, lattice, uh, such as you'd get from a, a, a CCD camera with uh, uniformly distributed uh, pixels. So in this table here, uh, we've categorized the different uh, types of decomposition uh, that you can apply. So I've got uh, a couple of rows here. Um, the top one shows those that are defined uh, over a continuous domain, uh, and the bottom two rows shows those that are defined over discrete uh, domains. And then I've got uh, two uh, columns. Uh, those are defined uh, over a global domain, and those are defined uh, locally. So Chebyshev are uh, discrete global uh, uh, descriptions of uh, an image. Um, and uh, we could also use uh, Zernike or Zernike uh, Mellim uh, polynomials. These are shown in a little uh, orange box because these are defined over po a polar coordinate system rather than a Cartesian uh, coordinate system as the other uh, ones shown here are. In general, uh, those shown towards the, uh, the top right uh, don't give us very much reduction in uh, dimensionality of the data unless we severely constrain them. Whereas those in the uh, towards the bottom left do give us a large amount of reduction in dimensionality of the data. All of these are capable of being 
invariant to uh, rotation, scale, and translation, providing we use normalized orthogonal polynomials. So in the example I showed in the previous slide, we used uh, Chebyshev polynomials. And if you want to use those, then, then the Vanessa project produced a small MATLAB executable that will take a strain map expressed as an image and decompose it into a set of uh, Chebyshev coefficients uh, and generate a feature vector for you. And you can find this executable at www.engineeringvalidation.org.